This is a video introduction to gas chromatography, which covers material from chapter 23 of your analytical chemistry textbook. The important stuff uh, that we'll talk about for gas chromatography is the choice of mobile phase, stationary phase, what the injection port should look like, and what kind of detector should be used. So, first thing we'll talk about is what does a GC instrument look like? Uh, the first thing is that there is an injector oven. This injector oven is where the carrier gas comes into the instrument and is mixed with the analyte, and it carries the analyte through the instrument. The injector oven is heated uh, because a gas chromatograph separates analytes based on their boiling point, and so the first thing that has to happen is that they have to be in the gas phase. We inject through a septum to keep the pressure difference between the outside air and the carrier gas, the mobile phase, and also to reduce any contamination from atmospheric species. After the injector oven, the carrier gas and analyte move onto the GC column, which is a coil of very thin wire, inside which is the stationary phase. This whole thing is inside of a column oven. And the column oven is what changes temperature over the course of a GC run. The injector oven is kept at a high temperature. After the column, the separated species go onto the detector, which is also kept at a high temperature, so that nothing condenses inside of it. And then the signal from the detector is read by a computer and plotted as peaks. Uh, on the x-axis is time, and on the y-axis is the amount of signal. So as they go through the chromatography column, the species are separated in space and time, and so they come out of the column at different times, depending on their boiling points. First, the injection port. Uh, this should be held 50 to 100 degrees C above the boiling point of all analytes. So typically 200 degrees C is a good idea uh, for an injection port. And you want this to ensure complete rapid vaporization of the sample as soon as you inject. So you inject with a syringe through the septum. Typical injection volume is a couple of microliters. Uh, if you're using liquids, it may be up to a milliliter if you're using gases. Uh, when you have a high solute concentration, you can do what's called a split injection, where most of your injection goes to waste, and then a very small, some small percentage goes on to the column. If you're doing a trace analysis where you have a very low solute concentration, you would not want to split. You can inject directly onto the column. The GC column itself can be either a packed column, which we'll talk about first, uh, or a different kind. So packed columns use a solid sorbent, so like silica, SiO2, uh, that has a relatively high surface area, and it's packed inside the column, hence the name. These silica particles should be small and uniform to decrease processes that we'll talk about later that can lead to band broadening. Advantages of this is that you can inject, direct, inject directly onto a packed column, and they have a large solute capacity, so they're difficult to overload. Uh, a disadvantage is that this large solute capacity comes along with a longer retention time, uh, and they also have less efficient separation, as compared to a capillary column. In a capillary column, the stationary phase is coated onto the walls of the column instead of packed in. Advantages of this is that they're more efficient than a packed column, uh, but they have a smaller sample capacity. so. Open tubular columns almost always use split injection instead of direct injection. You also need a longer column because you can't have uh, as big of a pressure difference between the beginning and the end of the column with this kind. Detectors for gas chromatography can be qualitative or they can be quantitative. Qualitative, uh, you can get, for example, a mass spectrometer to use as a detector or an infrared spectrometer. Uh, these will tell you the identity of your sample but not necessarily how much. Quantitative analyses uh, have to be added to any kind of detection method that you use in order to uh, relate the peak area that you get from the detector to the concentration of analyte that was in your original sample. You can either calculate response factors for internal standards, or you can create a calibration curve using peak area versus concentration. If we want to create a GC method, we have to come up with uh, some combination of parameters for the instrument that works to separate the analytes that we care about. So things to consider are the properties of the samples that we're trying to analyze, uh, what kind of detector will be able to detect our samples and either tell them apart or not, 
uh, and how can we inject the sample? What kind of sample volume do we need to split the injection? Something like this. And the reason to consider especially the idea, the identity of the analyte is that uh, if the analytes that we're trying to separate have very similar boiling points, it may be very difficult to separate them. Uh, so, or if we have very different boiling points, the separation may take a long time. So the way to get around this is by using a temperature program where the temperature starts out low in order to get an, a little bit of initial separation of things that have very similar boiling points and then ramps up quickly to a high temperature to drive things off the column that have a high boiling point. There are other factors to consider like the identity of the column, uh, the flow rate of the mobile phase, things like this, uh, which we will talk about more in class. <coughs>